So to understand how envelopes work, I'm going to grab a instance of operator and drop it into this MIDI track. And I'm going to record a single note that's just going to repeat over and over and over again. And we're going to play with the envelope of that note. So this is a, uh, let's see, that's a B. Let's bring that down some. C, that sounds good. So if I play this track, or play this clip, it just plays over and over and over again. And now we'll go into Operator, we'll look at the settings, and we'll see what's going on with the envelope. So this oscillator here on the bottom is playing the pitch that we're hearing. It's a sine wave that's designated here. And uh, I can look here to oscillator, or I can look here to envelope. Uh, under oscillator, you can see that there, we're only getting the fundamental. There's no harmonics listed. So uh, I'm only getting the fundamental of the waveform with no harmonics, and that's the definition of a sine wave, just the fundamental pitch with no overtones. But then when I click here on envelope, uh, you can see that this uh, shows the attack decay, release, sustain times for each of the, uh, or shows each of those parameters here, and you can manually adjust those down here, or you can grab them graphically and do them. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start by describing each one of these, attack, decay, release, and sustain, so that you can see what they all do. Uh, our clip is going to play this note over and over and over again while I move the attack back. So as I pull back on this corner, you can see the attack time here begin to increase. And what that is, is the amount of time in, in seconds and milliseconds that it takes for the sound to go from zero to its full volume. So uh, I'm going to start it playing and you can listen. Actually, what I should probably do is shorten this note so we can hear the beginning. There we go. And also turn it up some. So with the attack time, Right now, with it a straight line, it just immediately comes on. It just, the sound turns on all the way from the very beginning. And as I pull this back, you're going to hear the very initial sound begin to change. It's going to start sliding in. Uh, the volume of this note will slide in just a little bit slower. So you can see that's what attack sounds like. As I push the attack back, the note begins to ramp into the sound instead of just coming on all the way at once. Uh, the next one is decay. So as I uh, move this decay time, I actually have to move the sustain down for you to hear what the, the changes in decay. So first I'm going to move the sustain down to infinite. What this does is this causes the sound to come on all the way because attack is set to zero and then it begins to decay. And as I move this left and right, you can see the decay time changes. So this, this is really makes more of a percussive sound. <clears throat> so let's listen. So right now it's set to one second. Listen to that. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what decay does. So what I'm going to do now is show you sustained and release. So 
let's imagine for a moment that I've set this to a decay time that's pretty short, short enough for you to hear it anyway. So we get a little percussion at the beginning, like 131 milliseconds. That'll probably work. I'm gonna start playing this on the keyboard now. So as long as I'm holding the note, it's gonna stay at this middle level, this level that I've set here, the sustain level. And what that's saying is after an initial attack, you're going to decay over this amount of time to a sustain level as long as I'm holding the, the note down. And then as soon as I let go of the note, there is a release time before it goes back down to zero. So here's what you're hearing. The initial beep and, a, and an immediate decay over the course of 149 milliseconds down to this level, which is minus 23 decibels from the, from the initial sound. Uh, and then it's gonna hold as long as I hold the note and then it's gonna take uh, a release time of uh, 50 milliseconds, which is pretty short, and I'll change that in a bit too we'll get, when we get to release. So it's kinda cool, you can actually almost see it here in the meter come on all the way and then dip down to about halfway, which is what this is, and then I let go of it and it releases. If I decrease the sustain level, you hear the initial click is just as loud, but the sustain volume is lower. If I turn it up, and then now we'll deal with release. I'm gonna turn this, uh, well, I'll leave that where it is. I'm going to pull the release back in time. So remember, a thousand milliseconds is a second. So when I get up to like, you see here, 900, 855, 900 ish, then when I push it a little further, it goes out to one seconds and more. There you go, 1.10 seconds, and so on. So you're going to hear this as I as I let go of the note. Um, you'll hear it decrease. So now the release time has dec is decaying more slowly over time. So you can set up an instrument. Let me turn that down so it's not clipping. I can make it very sustainy, like an organ. Or I can make it more like a pad where I pull the attack time back so that it comes on slowly. can also change the decay time push or push the release time forward so that makes it uh, makes the sound both sneak in and sneak out so that's what the envelope of a sound is, and every sound has its own envelope. Some of them have very fast decay times, uh, where there's a fast, uh, a high attack, a fast attack, and then it decays quickly like percussion, and there's things that come on slowly like strings, and so on and so forth. But anyway, that's the concept of envelope and how it works in sound and psychoacoustics.